Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, what we will discuss is we will continue from where we left. So in the last class, we have discussed about some of the enzymes, uh, quickly reviewed about uh, restriction enzymes. Then we discussed about ligase, uh, T4 DNA ligase, E. coli ligase, and so on. So we were actually discussing about uh, somewhere around here, and we learned something called as the uh, polishing which means to generate uh, blunt ends so that we can like it, especially if there were anything, any incompatible in ends in the DNA, then it would be impossible to directly ligate them. For that, we have, uh, uh, if there is a case scenario like we have a five prime overhang, like in the case of eco R1, um, we can fill this gap because we can use uh, DNA polymerase, which we'll also have a brief look in the later part of today's lecture. Uh, we can use DNA pol polymerase to add here. Um, so it will add AA and TT. It is possible because uh, polymerization will always happen from five prime to three prime. Therefore, at the end, it will come, it will have like this. So now we have a blunt end. We can use, uh, we can uh, ligate this to another DNA molecule of interest, uh, which is also having blunt ends. And if you want to ligate these blunt ends, the best one is T4 DNA ligase. E. coli ligase um, cannot, it's not very efficient in ligating blunt ends. That's why it's not so. Uh, useful T4 DNA ligase is much easier to handle. Uh, it doesn't require any special cofactor like NAD plus and so on. In cases like uh, where we have three prime overhang, the lower strand is in um, is five prime to three prime as it's shown here. And we cannot fill this gap because DNA polymerase can only polymerize from five prime to three prime direction. So uh, the best thing therefore is to chop this DNA out um, and that can be done using three prime to five prime exonuclease action. Again, when we discuss about DNA polymerases, uh, we will try to have a look at it uh, a little bit. So that was, that was where we were. And I also uh, told you to uh, pay attention to all the possibilities. There are uh, possibilities and there are probabilities. You say possibility, anything is a possibility, but not everything is a probability. It's like if you have watched uh, uh, young Sheldon, there is, he was having an argument uh, with somebody. He's saying, what is the possibility that I might go home and see uh, $1 million on my bed? That is possible. Somebody might come and put it there and go. Is it probable? Zero. What is the probability? Almost zero. That the probability that somebody is going to put a uh, thousand uh, a million dollars on his bed uh, when he returns home is highly improbable. <clears throat> so we should be aware of first thing why this is important. Excuse me. <coughs> why this is important is. Um, uh, to know about all the possibilities is important because for thinking purposes, especially if you don't know what are all possible and you're only looking for what you want, then you are highly biased and that will narrow down your thinking process. So when any, any event, you are trying to predict an event or that might happen, the first prob uh, best thing to do is to find out what are all the possible possibilities and then you think what is the most probable one that is out of these possibilities what is the most probable one that is a good way of thinking actually so in our reaction system we can have uh, monomers we can have uh, linear uh, dimers or circular dimers and so on those are all possibilities and also recombinant DNA is also a possibility what is the probability of each of these cases if you look at this, uh, I think th the probability that uh, of self or circular monomers or circular dimers could be higher uh, compared to uh, this one. 
or at least because this, at least in this case, intramolecular association. In all these, uh, the other cases, uh, so in this case, it is, sorry, in all the cases, this is intermolecular association. Whereas in this case, it is intramolecular association. So how you, what might happen and so on depends on the uh, concentrations of each of these and uh, many other aspects. But how can we, if, uh, what you need to understand is if these form more, the lesser it, the recombinant DNA uh, plasmid, recombinant plasmid is forming. So we need to increase the uh, recombinant DNA formation. So if you want to do that, there is one way is to reduce the uh, formation of other possibilities. So we also discussed about alkaline phosphatase. It's an enzyme that removes the phosphate group. Therefore, it was a phosphate group was here. It is removed, so what is remaining is uh, OH. This would have been um, so five prime, three prime OH. This is five, and so uh, five prime. And here you'd have five prime, and this is three prime OH. And this one was five prime phosphate, but now because of action of uh, phosphate alkaline phosphatase, uh, the phosphate group is rem removed. Therefore, there is only one OH here and this would have been uh, 3 prime OH. So now the ligase, when we discussed about ligase, we know we discussed that there should be a 5 prime phosphate and there should be a 3 prime OH. That is the uh, substrate. Those are the substrates for ligation. And in this case here, you have a 3 prime OH and a 5 prime phosphate. Uh, whereas in the bottom strand, you have 5 prime OH and 3 prime OH. So ligase can seal this gap that is here, but it cannot seal the gap that is uh, in the bottom strand because there is no 5' prime phosphate. <clears throat> so um, now there are other possibilities about if there is no, uh, if, the, if the ends of two DNA molecules are not compatible, say this is one end and this is the other end, if they are not compatible, uh, the two DNA molecules are not compatible, what else can be done? That is one of these, uh, there are several other options like uh, using linkers and so on. The linker is a fragment of DNA molecule. You can synthesize it, something like this. And you can have the restriction site here, say GAATTC. G A A T T C. So this will be five prime and three prime, and this is five prime, and here is three prime. G A A T T C, and here you have G A A T T C. So any DNA molecule that is having a restriction site, restriction site of our choice. So these are actually synthetically synthesized. I mean, you, you created them. They are synthetic. So why you are doing it is, uh, I will tr use the example that is given in the figure here. Uh, you synthesized a DNA molecule like this, and you synthesized the other strand. You allowed the uh, uh, base pairing of these two strands. So you will have now have a DNA molecule that is this. So this situation, uh, well, I will just try to describe what is a linker. Then we will have a little bit of what can be done, uh, how we can use that. Here is a DNA molecule that is uh, cut with a small one. Uh, so according to the figure, you have a DNA molecule. Assume that is the gene of uh, interest. And it has a small one uh, site here. And here is another small one site. And the vector is uh, here and assume that it has a BAM H1 site. Now, this small one uh, results in uh, a blunt ends, whereas BAM H1 uh, results in a overhang. So they are, if I cut this, uh, they, are, they are not compatible. So how can I make this fragment ligate with the vector? That's the question. 
So in this figure, what would they, they would have treated this with SMA1. And it would generate a fragment with ends with that are, I'll just put as yes for understanding, for simplicity. Um, this is a blunt end. And now, and if BAM H1 here, um, I will assume this is cut with BAM H1, and I'll write as B, which will generate a overhang. Uh, BAM H1 will cut somewhere here. That is, this is the cut site, and it would have cut something like this. So it it generates in five prime overhang. So this is the the vector has. 5 prime overhang, uh, which is of damage one side, whereas uh, the fragment has a blunt end because it has naturally it was, it was having uh, small one sides. Now, if I want to put this in, you need to add some DNA molecule here, which is having you can ligate it, ligate something here, and that one I will call it as a B, that is the linker. What is a linker now? It is a sequence of DNA that has a restriction site. Here, because our objective is to clone this uh, this fragment into, into the vector, we have to have overhangs that are compatible with the vector. Therefore, we need to add damage one linkers. Sorry. Now, what will be? what we can do is we will cut this with link uh, damage one and it will generate a fragment such as something like this which will now have a damage one end and then now you have uh, the ends of the fragment are now compatible with the vector and then you can have a recombinant DNA molecule something like this so when we make the vector, uh, sorry, when we make the linker, here they have made, uh, they used blunt ends. Why do you think they used blunt ends? It's because the fragment, the fragment has blunt ends. So you want it to uh, ligate this, uh, ligate the linker to the uh, blunt end here. That's why you had blunt end. But if you say you had eco R1 uh, overhang here, then you could have made, because we are doing it synthetically, we can always design the way we want to. All it needs to is have some basis. So a linker does not have to be uh, something uh, with blunt ends all the time. It can sometimes be like this, or it can be... Um, it can be the reverse way with uh, different types of overhang. Sometimes it can be like this also. So the ends, uh, whether what you have or not, is dependent on the fragment. What frag, the what the fragment uh, type is. Whether it is a three prime overhang, five prime overhang, or a blunt end. So there is only it's a nucleotide. Only thing you need is it should have a restriction site. In whatever orientation it can be, but it should have a restriction site. Any fragment like that artificially synthesized and consists of a restriction site is called a linker. Okay, so we have to treat it with uh, treat the linker to generate the ends now, which now will be compatible with the vector. That's how uh, uh, linkers can be used. When we discuss about uh, the next one, adapters, then you will understand it much better. I hope uh, this is here uh, is an eco R1 linker. You have a decameric linker molecule. So here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is the actual site. You had you had two here. You can actually make a linker that has more than one restriction site also, not just eco R1. You can also have added damage one if you want to. It's not so useful though, but yeah. Uh, so there can be, you, it's flexible. It's based dependent on your, uh, uh, in the experimental setup and so on. Why I'm trying to discuss this in detail is in the, when you are going to solve any problems based on uh, you are supposed to use a linker or anything else. You should then be 
able to think of all these and write in details each of these steps, your reasoning of why you chose a particular type. So yeah, foreign DNA, you add the linkers, they will get joined. Not just only one will join here. You can have, you might also have multiple because say, for example, here you have a blunt end and blunt end. You're doing a blunt end ligation. Not, this is what is ideally what we require, but this may also form, but it doesn't matter to us because when you add eco or one or the restriction side, this will be cut and the so will the other one also be cut and we will still get the uh, whatever we want, right? We will get the fragment with uh, appropriate overhangs that will be compatible with the vector. Therefore, we can, when we now add DNA ligase, I mean, we have to purify um, all these smaller fragments and get this. How do you purify these smaller fragments? You have a, I will try to take this and try to have these smaller fragments. So you have the fragment and you also have some other bits of DNA molecules that you cut uh, because, and now if you, and I am adding a fragment, sorry, a vector. And if I add ligase to this, what is the problem? What would happen? Anybody? You can try to answer. There is a possibility for these fragments to again like it with this. So you need to get these unnecessary parts of uh, fragments of DNA out of the reaction. What would you want to increase the uh, fragment and vector uh, uh, for binding is you should only have the vector and the uh, fragment with restriction uh, overhangs appropriate ones. These small bits of things that you cut off, like as in shown here, they should be removed from the reaction, right? Because they have overhangs that are compatible, that are almost similar, uh, so they can actually ligate back and that will reduce the probability of the formation of vector fragment uh, recombinant DNA. To do that, you can, you have, there are multiple ways. One way is to do electrophoresis. I hope you re recollect uh, electrophoresis because the fragment that is here will be of the largest size and the others are very small. So when you do uh, electrophoresis, the larger fragment is likely to be somewhere here if this is the way you have loaded and the smaller ones will be here, something like this, right? Then you cut out this gel part and then um, and then purify the DNA. And then you will mix it with the vector and then uh, when you mix it with the vector um, and then add like this, you will have the formation of the recombinant DNA. Okay. So there is also uh, another way of how you can do it. Say for example, I have this mixture of fragments and this, uh, sorry, this uh, the fragment DNA and the small waste fragments that I need to get off. If I try to precipitate, which one do you think will precipitate faster? If I do uh, something isopropanol precipitation or so, the more the larger fragments are likely to uh, settle faster, and the smaller ones are likely to be in the liquid, which you can remove off, but for this purpose with the linkers, the DNA molecules are actually very tiny, so that might not be useful. But uh, so the electrophoresis method is better to um, get rid of all the unnecessary material such as these ones, okay? And the next one is adapters. If you understand adapters, you can also understand um, uh, linkers. So both uh, go hand in hand. The difference between adapters and linkers, I will try to describe that. You have linker, which is supposed to have a restriction site, which then you will cut off, cut, will treat it with restriction enzyme to generate the overhang. So you have a linker, you attach it with the fragment of interest, then you treat it with restriction endonuclease to generate the overhang, right? Something like this. Why not just add the um, 
add this whatever overhang is there why to cut again this is adapter is much more smarter in linkers linker has the complete restriction site whereas in adapters it only has the overhang the overhang that you want to put um, so i would first describe um, an adapter something like this first is 5 prime oh 3 prime oh 5 prime phosphate and 3 prime uh, oh there is something odd about it right what is odd about it you should have had 5 prime phosphate not 5 prime oh this is also a synthet chemically synthesized so uh, we can design the way we want it to so these people have designed uh, with a 5 prime phosphate and we will try to compare what would have happened try to think of possibilities and so on there uh, once you do that we'll have a better understanding so i'm taking two different uh, uh, two different adapters okay i'll just put that this is the adapter i will try to put it as 5 prime um, oh 5 prime phosphate here 3 prime oh and this is the overhang and I should have put 5 prime phosphate, but it is 5 prime OH, and here is 3 prime OH. I am trying to compare it with another one. Now, I, everything is same except that this one is a phosphate. Here you have OH, and here you have phosphate. This is the 5 prime, and here you have OH, 3 prime. This is 5 prime. What is the difference between these two? The only difference is somewhere. Um, this is the only difference. Now, for uh, ease, I will try to ask a question and say, uh, which one do you think, what will happen if I added a ligase to this? What are all the possibilities? If I add ligase to this, what are the possibilities? This is easy, right? Here I will put as um, the overhang is C C T A G. Here also it is C C T A G. If I reorient this, uh, I will I will sorry I will write here another one because I need to explain something uh, to make you imagine things. That's a little difficult. So I am writing, this is 5 prime, 3 prime, this is 3, and here you have 5. I'm trying to put a different uh, adapter here. And I need you to somebody to answer. Uh, what is This is G, I think, right? C, C, T, A. TAG. That's right. Here I'm trying to look CCTAG. I just inverted it a little bit. So, um, is there any possibility that. Can we see this? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. That's, I think, right. What would happen if I have added like this to this? How what will be its uh, the sequence here? Uh, C T A G. Is that right? This would be five prime, three prime. This is five prime, and this is three prime. So here are two linkers. One is in red color. The other one is in green color. Is there any difference between these two uh, adapters? There is actually no difference. Only the orientation, if I just uh, rotate this in this way, this is what you will get. And imagine now if you add a ligase, OK? It might actually uh, ligate these two. What will then be generated? 
uh, for simplicity may i change change a little bit i'll take it like this c t a g that's the uh, overhang okay c t a g okay so now what may happen in this case i was trying to sell uh, let me see if i can explain it again so you have this c t a g this is one overhang or adapter same another adapter will also uh, can like it and actually it has same overhangs this will be c t a g and if you had uh, this is 5 prime 3 prime 5 and 3 prime 5 prime 3 prime this is 5 and here is 3 prime I want you to answer. Do you think uh, a this phosphodiester bond is possible here or not? I want you to answer that question. Somebody can switch on the uh, mic and answer that question. Yes or no, and why? What is the group here in this three prime? It is OH. At five prime here you can look up here uh, look in this case five prime it is phosphate what about in this one uh, three prime is oh and here you have phosphate so if dna like ace was added they could be sealed together like this right now think of in this case what would have happened here so the sequence I said was uh, C, T, A, G. And the other one would be C, T, A, G. But then there is something different. The difference is about the phi prime OH. So this is phi prime and the group here is phosphate. This is 3 prime, so that is the group is OH. And in this, for the second uh, adapter, the group is phosphate or uh, OH. It's actually OH. So it's not phosphate, but OH. Here you have uh, OH. This is phosphate. And here you have OH. And here again, you have OH. And this is uh, 3 prime OH. I hope you can compare these two uh that the groups alone you can see that this is phosphate five prime phosphate and here also you will have five prime phosphate but the difference is with this one where you will notice that it is actually oh so ligase cannot act on this we don't want to act on that we want the ends uh, the we want the fragment to have just the overhang like this if something else binds up like this, like it, then it is no longer an adapter. It's almost like a linker. You should again use a restriction site to cleave it off. Sometimes even that is that might not be possible. I hope you understood this, but otherwise I will return. Uh, I will address this again as well uh, next time. Uh, I'll review that. So what you would take is you will take the fragment and you will attach the like this so the design for something like this or in this case this modification is essential to prevent any ligation on the overhang side to only allow the ligation on this on this side or you can call it the blunt side as it's shown so you may end up forming well i said uh, the overhang does not uh, the linker may still be able to form, sorry, the adapter may still be able to ligate this way because there are OH and phosphates and so on, OH and phosphates, they are possible. But they will prevent this formation. Why this is important is if you see the probability wise, which one do you think is likely possible to ligate uh, in these two structures? I'm just trying to put again. Okay, assume there are two adapters like this. Which is highly probable, uh, situation A or situation B? Forget about ligation. 
joining of two adapters just um, non covalently is this possible or is this highly probable or situation b is highly probable b is highly probable because you have these hydrogen bonds that form between here for these two uh, adapters as is shown in situation a there is nothing to make them hold together if you actually didn't add like this this will not bind at all like this but if you did even if you did not add like this the adapters are likely to bind in this way because of hydrogen bonding between these two okay so i that is what i want you to understand uh, about it so the we prevented the formation of uh, or ligation on the overhang side and this side we allowed the um, uh, hydrogen sorry the ligation to happen so the fragment would have been attached with a uh, with an adapter on either side now we can cut the vector and ligate these two and we will put it there should be a question any questions here anybody okay we'll come back to this again later uh, if you do not have the question would be if you do not have oh so we removed the pi prime oh it will not able it will not act and therefore we need to uh, ligase will not act to make a it the nick will remain so we need an enzyme called as polynucleotide nucleotide kinase or pnk what is polynucleotide kinase what is a kinase kinase is an enzyme that transfers a phosphate group to the 5 prime phosphate so if you add pnk or polynucleotide kinase and atp the phosphate that was sorry the 5 prime group uh, here was oh and now that will get phosphorylated you because you added uh, pnk will transfer the gamma phosphate from atp to the 5 prime um, 5 prime oh of dna molecules and now when you ligate and add ligase ligase will have uh, both sides sealed and you have two you have a recombinant dna uh, formed without a, any nick in there i hope you understood uh, the structure of like uh, adapter we should know you can just read like okay there is all no uh, there is only uh, there is no phosphate here i think many of you even though you might have studied that you might not have re re uh, thought about uh, that there is no phosphate group in the phi prime side and if you did we should have asked the question why there is why is it designed such a way that there is no phi prime phosphate this all theory will go into that okay it's about thinking the probabilities trying to foresee what is probable and prevent what we don't want so that we will get what we want okay so adapters um, ligation then treat it with polynucleotide kinase so that the 5 prime phosphate is restored then you add ligase mix vector and uh, to the mixture of vector and fragment and then we will have a, a recombinant dna so there are other formats of adapters also in the previous one you have seen as is shown as if it is a blunt end like thing okay uh, but there are also other ways you can do. You can have a um, vector, uh, sorry, adapters like this. You can have, say, for if the fragment has something like this, you choose a overhang that comes like, like this, but you add a an adapter uh, or a sequence, something like this, to the adapter, so that when it binds, this was actually damaged one sticky end, and now because you added um, a an adapter now you have eco r1 compatible sites this is um, simple uh, when would you re need this is the question so you have an adapter uh, sorry you have a fragment and it has uh, eco r1 site but it has on either side of it it has damage one sites 
and the fragment, uh, sorry, the vector that you are actually using as a carbon um, sites. Now, if you treat, if you treat this fragment uh, with ecor one, the gene is going to be cut into fragments, and it's not useful to us. But if you use linker, you can cut it with damage one. Try to cut it with damage one, and then add linkers of ecor one. But then there is a problem. Linker will cut here and cut here also. But there is a problem because the there is an ecor one site within the gene of interest, so that part will also be cut. So it's not useful. Therefore, what one will have to do is use damage one, so that you will end up with uh, damage one sites on here, and then add adapters for ecor one. Now you don't have one doesn't have to use uh, any restriction enzyme like ecor one because you now have ecor one adapter uh, overhangs already that would have been generated. Treat the vector with ecor one, and now um, the fragment is compatible with the uh, vectors uh, fragments or sorry ends of the vector, and then you can end up having a a recombinant DNA molecule. Okay, I hope you understood that. If not, I will repeat uh, in some other class. But you can also ask any specific questions, and I'll try to repeat that. You can also type your questions. I will uh, have a look intermittently and try to address them at the end of the class. Um, I think you all know about uh, terminal transferase. The, and it is called as it is used for homopolymer tailing. So, what we need to uh, know is sometimes you can have there is an enzyme called as home terminal transferase. What it does is it is a it is a polymerase three prime to uh, sorry five prime to three prime polymerase. And there are some more things. It is it's this is the activity. It is template independent. That means you, you can think of any DNA polymerase that we know of that are used in replication and so on. How do you describe them? We call them as DNA dependent DNA polymerase. To define RNA polymerase, we say DNA dependent RNA polymerase. If we want to talk about telomerase or uh, any reverse transcriptase, we talk them of RNA dependent uh, RNA dependent DNA polymerase. They're all majority of these uh, polymerases are template dependent, whereas terminal transferase is template independent. It does not look at template; it just adds whatever bases are available. It is it is a it, because it's in template independent, it will just add whatever bases are available to the growing chain. So what can be a growing chain or not is uh, uh, questions. So if you have uh, blunt ends like this, or I will have to, yeah, OK, G, A, C, T, and this will be C, T, A, G, A, sorry, C, T, G, A. So this is a blunt end. 5 prime and 3 prime, 3 and 5. So it is a polymerase and template independent. So if I added a mixture of uh, all the DNTPs, and yeah, you have to write it as the substrates are DNTPs, it will just add whatever bases are available to it only to the 3 prime chain, a 3 prime end here. If I had a, another sequence, such as, um, for example, G A C T A G A C uh, C T G A T. Now this one is five prime, and here you have three prime. Here is three prime and five prime. It can only add DNA molecules to the three prime free three prime end. You have a three prime end, so it will add whatever bases are there. If it is there, it will add that. 
But if you have a sequence such as uh, C, T, G, A, T, C, G, A, C, this would be 5 prime, 3 prime. Here is 5 prime and 3 prime. Terminal transferase will have difficulty to add bases here because this kind of template may hinder the activity of terminal transferase. So while um, the blunt ends are a kind of substrate, if they are substrates, then terminal transferase can act upon them. Uh, three prime overhangs like this, that is also fine. It can act upon them. But if you have five prime overhangs and it's supposed to add something here, that's going to be a difficulty. It's not going to happen. So about terminal transferase, they add DNTPs. They add in the direction of five prime to three prime polymer uh, through uh, polymerization, five prime to three prime polymerization. They only add to the three, free three prime OH. So you have to write, uh, there should be a free three prime OH. And they are template independent. So we can use these terminal transferase to perform some actions uh, for cloning purpose. You can take a vector and add terminal transferase and add DGTP. The only G that is available, the only nucleotide that is available is DGTP. So it will just add here. Again, how many of bases it is adding depends on the number available, uh, availability, concentration of the supplied nucleotide and the time of exposure. Usually it could be some hundreds. And uh, so this is, you, you will get uh, on the three prime side, uh, Gs are added. And so also in this case. Now you can take the insert and add um, terminal transfer as uh, transferase and use DCTP. So again, it will add all the C's here. And now if you mix the uh, vector and insert fragment, um, they can, because you have chosen to give into the vector with DGTP and uh, insert with DCTP, they both are complementary. They can form base pairing between them. And now this is the uh, vector and this is the insert. Now you have a, um, what do you call, yeah, recombinant DNA. But there are problems with this that you have said, because we do not know how many bases are being added. Some, this is uneven. It's not predictable. So there is not like exact match will not be there. There might be excess or gaps like this. But once you, uh, once this fragment is, or the recombinant DNA is put into bacterial cell, the repair mechanisms can take over and uh, they will fill the gaps. That is how you can do. The, the important thing is, the although here it is depicted only as six or seven bases, it could actually be some hundred sometimes. Assume 100 Gs and C, that is about 300 uh, uh, hydrogen bonds. I think they are good enough to hold these two uh, DNA molecules together and they can be uh, transferred. Some people have also used uh, trying to chop off additional ones and trying to fill up the gaps with DNA polymerase and so on. But I, I'm not sure if that works out well. Okay. So I'll stop here and I will try to, uh, yeah, this is just a repeat of that. Um, this is to generate, here you see uh, this case, you have a DNA molecule and they use lambda exonuclease. Exonuclease has, it is a five prime to three prime exonuclease activity. So it digests away some parts of the five prime like in here. So you have three prime overhang. Three prime overhang is a good substrate for uh, terminal transferase. Now you have uh, terminal transferase as DATP. You'll get a large uh, tails of A poly A tail here. And for the uh, vector, you can choose to add poly T uh, in the same way. And then you can mix and anneal them and then transform. Okay, I'll step here. I'll stop here, and I would want to uh, take any questions you may have.
and in the next class i'll continue the later others any questions please Hello. Yes, there is a question uh, about uh, the possibility of annealing of adapters. Okay, let me check uh, where I meant. So in this question, um, um, won't we have possibility of? Okay, um, in this case, we have already attached. We have obtained this fragment or insert, and we have added the these uh, uh, adapters. We will wash away every. Um, after each of these steps, there is always a cleaning part. So we usually perform electrophoresis or some other precipitation mechanism or centrifugation you can do and get rid of any excess. Uh, all the excess adapters are uh, removed away. And only then we are going to proceed with further uh, processing. Then we are treating with polynucleotide kinase and we are restoring the 5 prime phosphate so that efficient uh, binding can, uh, I mean, ligation can happen. Uh, Arvel's question, how do we generate this 5' prime phosphate in the first place? Um, chemical synthesis of DNA is uh, with the job of the chemistry people. Not so good at that, but I'll try to address this. So when you're choosing it, uh, choosing the first base, uh, there are, I don't know if uh, you have come across DNA synthesis or not. Uh, so this is, I'll represent as 3' prime OH of the uh, sugar and I'm going to put here uh, this is the phosphate group okay just for simplicity and how did I'm trying to explain how they generate the whole uh, DNA single strand now assume that this is uh, the first one uh, G first of all when they are uh, what they would do is they have a stationary phase uh, there is a column a large I'm drawing only a small part of the column there are a stationary phase like this, and they would add one base to this, okay? Uh, one nitrogen nucleotide. How they add is again chemistry part, and I'm not too sure about it. But then after that, you have a OH group here. You can, chemical synthesis, you can, you can now add second, second base that is A. If I want to add A, I will take, a solution of uh, DATP. The DATP should not be as such. So it should have the 3 prime OH of it should be blocked. That means it is not open for uh, further um, uh, or nothing, anything else being added to it. Say if I added DATP just like that and I initiated the polymerization, chemical polymer, uh, chemical you can see different solutions and you can make the phosphate bond form. So if I did that, one A would be added, but it also has an OH group. And again, another A would be added and you'll have a keep on having a, a lot of poly A tail. So what they do is they usually block this using some other chemical group, that OH. So you have G and now if I block this, there is only one possibility is that there is a OH on the stationary phase, the G of the stationary phase, phase, and the phosphate of the incoming nucleotide. So that will get added here and will remain. This is the OH of it, but it is blocked. In the next step, they do a deblocking step where they remove this block. Now this three prime OH 
uh, I mean, they will wash off the column and then do the deep locking. Now this three prime OH is available. Now they will add uh, DTTP. Again, it's DTTP, the three prime OH is blocked. There is only one reaction that is T between the a phosphate bond between uh, phosphorus bond between A and T through this three prime OH is possible. And then they will wash off the column D blocking will happen and then they would add C on D CTP would be added that is how they actually build the whole uh, you will get the sequence like this it's a, a tedious process it used to cost very uh, a lot but now we have it is not that cost for addition of each base it costs some around 17 or 20 rupees nowadays but that is how DNA was synthesized so when they are choosing what uh, when they are choosing the first G or the way they are going to cut this out is what is important. And these two are two separate DNA molecules. OK, now if I have one DNA molecule and uh, one strand of it, the five prime phosphate and this is OH, I can treat this with alkaline phosphatase and get rid of this. So you, you'll have five prime phosphate. And then I can mix it with complementary strand, which was normally with five prime phosphate and three prime OH. These two will be hydrogen bonded. And that is how you can generate simply, because there is no nothing covalent about these two. These two are not synthesized together. This strand is synthesized separately. This strand is synthesized separately. And then these two complementary strands were made to mix to form one adapter like this. Is that clear? But with chemistry, uh, chemistry people can do a lot of stuff that we don't understand. I, I, for example, will only be dealt with genetic information and so on. I know some chemistry, but not uh, the complete detail of it. But this is simple. Uh, this is no big deal, actually, for them. Any other questions? Any one more? We have two minutes, if you ask. OK, then. Um, we'll see in the next class. I will try to, I think, from next week on, I'll try to record more classes and just post them so that you watch and we will discuss later. OK? Mm. Take care and have fun then. Go for lunch. Oh, you finished your lunch. See you. Bye-bye. Bye, sir. Bye-bye.